AviationPros.com is the portal website for AMT, airport business, and ground support worldwide magazines. Visit daily for breaking news, industry blogs, and insightful articles from our magazine's editorial team. And don't forget to sign up for our publication's daily e-newsletters. It's all at AviationPros.com. Hello and welcome to the Aviation Pros Podcast. I'm Christina Marsh, Editor of Airport Business. I caught up with Sam Samadar, the Chief Executive Officer of the Kelowna International Airport, right before the end of his term as Chair of Airports Council International North America, to talk about some of his biggest career accomplishments. Sam, first and foremost, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, it's my pleasure. So you've been the ACI NA Chair for the past two years now. And as your term is coming to an end, I'd like to take some time with you to reflect on that. So what has it been like being the ACI NA chair and what has it meant to you? Yeah, so uh, as ACI NA chair, you're actually um, representing all the airports in North America, both Canada uh, and the U.S. And uh, it's been an incredible privilege. Uh, uh, This year was the 75th anniversary of the organization, and I am... Uh, the second Canadian ever to uh, to chair uh, this group, but uh, it has been a, a tremendous learning experience, uh, and has been a tremendous uh, opportunity uh, to provide some influence um, uh, to the organization in terms of uh, uh, specific areas, especially coming out of the uh, pandemic. So, can you tell us what's all involved with being the chair of ACINA? Well, you represent uh, airports and and developing positions of airports, uh, uh, both from a lobbying perspective in in Ottawa, uh, as well as uh, uh, Washington, D.C. And uh, as you can imagine, the ecosystems in the U.S. and Canada are very, very different. And it's really about uh, learning uh, and helping uh, shape those positions. And operationally, of course, we have a lot of things in common uh, in terms of how you uh, run airports and the issues around airports, but certainly the lobbying side of it um, uh, is very, very different uh, in our two countries. Sure, yeah. So are there any accomplishments that you're particularly proud of during your time as chair? I, I am. Um, there was there was a, a couple of things that we wanted to, to get through. Uh, one was the governance review of the organization, and Canada and the U.S. merged uh, almost uh, 12 years ago uh, to become uh, ACI in North America. And uh, we were able to uh, do a governance review, uh, holistically look at our organization and the opportunities that we could uh, look for improvement, uh, and we did that, uh, which was which was very very gratifying. Uh, the second part really was on on diversity, equity, inclusivity, and uh, one of the mandates I, I passed on to uh, our airports in North America was really about um, developing best practices. Uh, in diversity, equity, inclusive, and, and creating a, a working uh, paper uh, that allowed uh, airports to look at what other airports are doing in terms of growing uh, that culture uh, within airport organizations. And as you can imagine, you know, as as airports, uh, we welcome people from around the world, and therefore it's very, very important that our, that our culture on diversity, equity, inclusivity. Uh, represents that at our specific airports. So that paper was completed. Uh, the working group uh, involved uh, airports both in Canada and the U.S. Uh, of, of uh, people that have many, many different uh, disciplines. Um, and it's now a guidance document that uh, that airports will be able to use. So, Sam, you are also the CEO of the Kelowna Airport. And I understand that um, one of the big programs that you guys had been working on getting off the ground was uh, a YMCA child care center. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, you know, we're, we're one of uh, uh, very, very few airports that now have a daycare uh, uh, on our on our campus. And uh, I've been preaching about this uh, uh, with my colleagues across North America that we need to do it. But really, uh, it, it was a true partnership here at, here at Kelowna. We had um, the land that we as the airport were able to to donate uh, uh, for the facility. Uh, The infrastructure was paid for by the province of British Columbia, uh, almost $3.8 million. 
uh, to build the structure. And then we had our largest private employer on the airport, uh, KF Aerospace, which actually is the largest private employer in the city with over a thousand uh, uh, people, uh, agreed to pay for the operating costs for the next 15 years uh, for that for that facility. And so that uh, really culminated into uh, us being able to open the daycare in October uh, with our partner, the YMCA, that runs the operation. It has uh, 86 uh, slots and it is well uh, utilized, uh, but it has been uh, just a, a tremendous uh, piece of, of infrastructure that really speaks to supporting uh, our employees that work here on the campus at Kelowna. So how successful has the child care center been? I understand that there's a wait list. Yeah, we created uh, 86 positions um, and uh, it, it has been uh, extremely successful in terms of uh, pickup. Um, and I, I can tell you a story. Um, one of the, uh, uh, the housekeeping staff that actually lead uh, the housekeeping section, she just had uh, a child and she said she would not be coming back to work. Uh, if uh, that child care center was not here uh, on the airport. And so that's just one little uh, success story. But the, 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 the reasoning behind this is really about providing those child care services to the entire campus. Uh, and um, it has been well, very well su subscribed. Uh, we actually uh, built it in such a way that we could increase the size of the facility. And uh, we are uh, looking at uh, how we might execute that in terms of expanding the, the facility itself. Yeah, that's fantastic. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about the uh, airport terminal uh, building expansion project that's happening at the airport? Yeah, we're, we're increasing the uh, facility for about 30% bigger than what it is today. Uh, the project really got delayed uh, because of COVID. And so we're very, very excited to be able to uh, be building that space. Um, it's, it's going to um, add a new uh, pre-board screening area, uh, which much larger than, uh, than what we have today to accommodate increased growth. Uh, we're also increasing the size of the departure room itself. For those of you that may have traveled recently, you know how, how compressed that area uh, gets. Um, and then we're also converting it in, in, in a way that allows for one aircraft, one gate uh, concept uh, so that people don't get lost in our airside corridor and end up uh, boarding the wrong airplane. So this will allow uh, a much easier flow uh, for passengers to find their airplane, get on board, and then disembark uh, as well. And as in addition, we're adding more concessions and more concession opportunities uh, into that space. And we're building it uh, using a structural laminated wood uh, really showcasing uh, BC products in terms of BC wood products and the things they can do in terms of the structural uh, development uh, of a building. And so that will showcase uh, what BC is all about as well. So we're very, very excited to, to have this coming online. What phase are you guys currently in in the uh, expansion project? So we're in the initial uh, stages. Uh, in uh, 2022, uh, we did a lot of the underground servicing. And so where we're at today is really uh, working on the components that we need to come out of the ground. So uh, stabilizing the ground itself. And then soon thereafter, you'll start to see um, uh, the foundation uh, being developed into the early part of uh, next year. So we're looking at really uh, 2025 before we start to realize uh, the operational side of this facility. Okay, exciting. Very much so. So I understand that the airport is also working on another project, and that's an on-site hotel, correct? Yeah, we, we, you know, it's it's no secret that we've had uh, the aspirations of a hotel and a parkade. Uh, that's the opportunity that we put out there, and uh, we are this project uh, in terms of working through this is has been about a year, year and a half now, and uh, we will be making an announcement. Uh, uh, in late January in terms of who the successful proponent is and what that will look like. Well, I can't wait to hear more about that. It's, it's very, very exciting again. And it's, it's, a, it's a busy, busy time. And I should have mentioned uh, uh, with the terminal expansion itself, it's the single biggest investment uh, that we've ever made as an airport. That's fantastic. I'm truly excited to see what that looks like in the future.
Um, speaking of uh, the future, looking ahead, um, as the ACINA chair and the CEO of the Kelowna Airport, where do you see the future of, avi- of the aviation industry heading? Are there any trends that you're seeing in technology or innovation? Yeah, we, we are one of our pillars that we're being very much focused on coming out of uh, uh, COVID is on innovation. And really, we know that uh, the younger generation, for example, uh, very much want personalized travel. They want a personalized travel experience. And so uh, there's there's some operational pieces that we uh, definitely can do a better job of. And uh, what we're doing is working with uh, our partners like the airlines and App Canada in terms of sharing uh, data more closely. Uh, and the example I can give is uh, if you have an aircraft, for example, that's outbound of Toronto and is late leaving uh, Toronto, that we have the collaborative tools to to alert us in advance. And this could be four hours in advance, five hours in advance based on the stage length of the flight that says that this aircraft is now uh, going to be late arriving in Kelowna and you have a conflict that's going to occur uh, at the gate assignments. And this will be done automatically using uh, AI tools. And um, using that kind of technology, it may automatically assign what the new gate for that aircraft is. And I think many of people have experienced arriving at an airport, landing, and then holding off uh, the terminal because there isn't a gate available. So, so this allows that to be uh, more efficient. Another piece for the for for, for the for the passenger uh, themselves is really creating a reservation system through pre-board screening, and uh, instead of waiting in a line uh, that could go 30 minutes, 40 minutes, uh, you get a reservation that says in this 15-minute window that you've selected, you can now go and proceed through uh, through pre-board screening. So, working through that, uh, we have already launched in in November a a virtual queuing system for our for our cabs, so they don't have to come to the airport and wait in line for an hour uh, to pick up a fare. They can be anywhere uh, in the city. They'll be given a, a queue number, and that queue uh, number will, will count down, and then they can come to the airport, pick up their uh, uh, their ride, and uh, and then uh, carry on. So it makes them a lot more efficient. Uh, it reduces our greenhouse gas emissions. So by having vehicles idling uh, at the airport. And so those are, those are just some of the few things that we are pushing on. We're, we, we're, we're focused a lot on AI uh, in the work that we're doing, uh, right down to a virtual attendant. Uh, we're using obviously chatbot, uh, but also the ability to speak into a screen uh, to get the questions answered uh, that you want. Wow, there's a lot of, it sounds like there's a lot of really exciting things happening at the airport. There are, there are. and. Uh, and you know we we'll still have and I and I want to impress upon this we will still have that personal touch our ambassadors uh, that we have at the airport we have uh, the ambassador dog program uh, and we have our youth ambassadors all here at the airport uh, capable and willing to assist people uh, on a on a one to one personalized basis as well and so uh, we have kind of a mixing of the the innovation and technology as well as that personalized piece. That's amazing. Well, Sam, I want to uh, thank you for joining us today and uh, telling us a little bit about what's going on at the airport and um, talking to us about your time as the ACINA chair. Thank you, uh, Christina. I really appreciate it. Thanks again for listening to today's podcast. Stay up to date on industry news, current issues, and information specifically for airports, airport operations, FBOs, and airport-based business by subscribing to Airport Business Daily Newsletter. And as always, please continue to visit aviationpros.com.